Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another film. You can hear the song thrush singing. A willow warbler. There's the song thrush. Very repetitive, but varied at the same time. Sort of does one vocalisation in a certain way and then repeats it and then does the same again. I've sort of missed the dawn chorus this morning, but several birds are still still hanging on in there. Little wren in the background. I've not been in the wood for very long this morning, probably about half an hour. And there's lots of deer barking this morning. I'm not really sure why there was one um, dashing across the, the field. I did take a little video of it, hopefully um, that's come out and I might have shown it at the beginning of the film. And then there's been another one just over in the distance over here, whether they're communicating between each other is probably what, what's happening. Um, but really quite um, eerie to hear in the wood, very, very loud and almost unsettling. So I've come to this wood, it's one of my favourite woods, it's a little bit higher in elevation than another wood that I regularly go to and the reason I've come to this one is because I'm a little bit late in the season for bluebells and this wood being a little bit higher in elevation, the bluebells do persist for a little bit longer. Um, I'm not necessarily going to do bluebells particularly today, this wood isn't, isn't noted for them and I mentioned in a previous video that it's quite a scrubby wood you don't get those um, lovely open carpets of bluebells like you do in other parts of the country. I have absolutely no plan today um, and why would you uh, this time of year why restrict yourself so it's just a case of uh, having a good look around and see what's uh, what's revealing itself to the eye. Lots and lots of um, new fern growth, really beautiful. Like I said, the bluebells are still, are still in good condition here. And you've got this lovely, lovely green soft grass, which is called creeping soft grass. It's a common grass of, of woodland habitats. And it, it creates this beautiful, rich greens. This, this particular woodland has got lots of different habitats um, within it. You've got open areas, you've got very cluttered areas, you've got areas of open bog, um, you've got pine woods um, and, and typically broadleaf woodlands such as this, lots of sycamore, also lots of oak and um, an older woodland as well where the wetter areas are. I'm sort of just down this little flush here on my right hand side so lots of things to go at and like I say why restrict yourself when there's so much opportunity at this time of year. The one thing um, it, that is against me this morning is the, um, the, the weather. The, the sun is due to break around about 12 o'clock midday and um, I don't really think that I want to photograph in that sort of light today. I want to take advantage of this lovely soft subdued light. So I will stop waffling on and uh, get my skates on and see what I can find. Um, I will catch you very soon. So I've found my first shot. Now I will apologise whilst it's nice and quiet right now, the road is literally 25 yards away and it's the main commuting time so it's, it's really getting quite busy. There's a car again now coming so just have to bear with me on that one. So this little area here is a bit unusual in the wood in that I've got stitch worked in amongst the bluebells and it's really striking. The blues and the whites coupled with that lovely creeping soft grass that I mentioned earlier on that lovely vibrant green makes for a really pleasing view as you walk up to it and I'm sure there's any number of shots to be had uh, here but I tried initially to go for a slightly broader scene which I may well go back to I'm not sure yet I've just seen a nice little cluster there that I quite like of bluebells and stitch work and more of a long shot but um, initially I was drawn to the close-ups and uh, I've been sort of moving the lens around in my typical fashion looking for a pleasing group and I found one down here and what you've got is you've got 
two stitch work flowers out and one um, little bud above it to the right. So you've got that nice grouping of three. And what I'm doing is I'm actually shooting directly through um, an area of bluebell to create this lovely blue soft out of focus um, to sort of add almost like a wash to the, to the scene. I'll try and get the camera in now closer so you can see the particular flowers that I'm talking about. It's not easy because I don't want to trample any of these bluebells or stitch work, of course I don't. Um, but there are little corridors in, so I'll get this camera in now and then you can see, hopefully you can see um, the type of shot that I'm looking for before I put it on. So this granted is a very, very messy view of what I've actually got on my photograph, but uh, it does show all the elements that I want to just briefly discuss. So these two open stitch work flowers here and this um, closed one form the main focal point for my image. Nice group of three and you've got the contrast between the two open flowers and the one that's closed. This clump, cluster of bluebells here on the right hand side, my camera is positioned when I'm taking the shot just over here and I'm focusing through these bluebells and that creates a lovely blue wash over the whole scene. The camera's set to f4 so it really doesn't see anything in the foreground and, and nothing really of any concern in the background. You've just got the main focal, focal point is just this group of flowers that are all sat on the same focal plane as each other, so a nice easy shot to get. Now the problem that I do have is light, it's quite dark where I'm shooting at the moment and I've got the camera set on 400 ISO and that's given me a shutter speed of a 50th of a second. It's very very slow for a 120mm macro lens is that. I don't have any stabilisation on this camera so I am hand holding it and it is a really quite a significant big chunky camera to hold but I think I've got what I want. The camera's set to aperture priority. Um, just so I don't have to mess around with light, I can just move um, the camera in and out just to get exactly what I want and just trigger the shutter straight away. I've not got mirror lock up and I've not got self timer because I just want to trigger the camera the very, very second I see um, what the, the area, the, the flowers that I want sharp and then just grab it while I can. So I shall put that shot on now. feeling a little up against the clock. The sky is becoming clearer, the sun's starting to peep through at the moment, the light is nice and soft, but already on the tops of the, um, of the ferns, it's starting to develop harsh um, light on the, on the surfaces of them. So as patches of sunlight starting to appear here and there, uh, really not what I wanted this morning. It's only 10 to 8 and uh, I had hoped that I'd have another three hours of, of soft light. So I'm just going to have to do what I can. Just uh, as I was walking through this little patch just over here, there's um, a roosting butterfly, um, a green vein white. Really lovely to see. Um, always worth keeping your eye out on cold summer's mornings like this because the butterflies they go down to the ground to roost overnight and uh, if, you, if you do keep your eye out, especially in the locality of a food plant, um, you'll often find them roosting and of course when the sun comes out and warms up they'll, they'll just fly away. I'm not going to photograph it because it's not, it's not in an ideal place, it's just on top of a little leaf, leaf down there. Um, not the most picturesque location for a shot, so I'm just going to leave it alone and uh, try and find my next my next shot or shots before that sun comes out well and truly.
but what a beautiful place. The greens are so nice at this time of year. Really beautiful. Onward. So one of the things that I was hoping for this morning was to take a nice broad woodland scene and just, just move away a little bit from the close-ups and the abstracts and just get something more typical of a woodland uh, habitat picture. And I really like what I've got in front of me here. Um, granted, it's not bluebells on mass like you see in beech woodlands, but it's very typical of the more upland type woodlands that, that we get in Lancashire. The sycamore on the right hand side is the main anchor point for the image on the right hand side. Um, <laughs> angry raw deer again. I don't know whether they can see me and, and are just barking because they're not happy I'm in here. But I don't know. It, I'm pretty sure it's communicating with each other. Um, so as I was saying, you've got this big sycamore here on the right hand side and you've got these horizontal branches just creating balance on either side of the tree. What I love about this is in the foreground you've got these male ferns and they've created this lovely line of them along the base which I really like. The aspect ratio of this is going to be something like a 16 by 9 I imagine. I definitely don't want the sky in the shot. Moving further back you've got these other sycamore trees here and there's a group, particular group of this one on the right here and the one on the left and there's one further back that, that form a nice group of three in the background. Beyond that you've got coniferous woodland so the woodland goes quite dark in the background so that's nice, you've not, not got any light patches showing through. And then right at the back there's a line of bluebells that just creates a nice splash of colour along the base. You probably can't see that on the video camera. When I get the stills camera up, it's going to be a lot higher. Um, so hopefully that, that will show. So I'll get the camera out now and uh, get it all lined up. Yeah, so that's really quite nice. As I said, I've got the camera as high as possible. The main reason being it helps to create separation between the ferns in the foreground and the ferns in the background. It allows you to see the, the small patches of bluebells in between, uh, in between those ferns and it helps to create a bit more depth into the image. I'll get the video camera up now and hopefully you can see the composition on the back of the camera and I'll talk you through the settings. So hopefully you can see well enough on the back of the LCD. Um, I generally don't video through this, I think I mentioned before, it's just not, not great at all really. But um, this seems to do the job by video in the back of the LCD. I'll start with the settings, as you can see I'm on 100 ISO, f16 and a sixth of a second and I'm exposing slightly to the left. You can see there's some slight clipping on the histogram, there's a little bit of red there on the right hand side. That's the sky but I will be cropping that out so that's not a problem. I've got a standard lens, uh, focal length lens, it's about 35mm on, on, my, on, on my camera which is roughly about 50mm on a full frame camera. In terms of composition as you can see the sycamore on the right creating the anchor that I mentioned and the three trees that I wanted to point out are just there, there and then one in the middle. That creates a nice little balance and harmony on the left hand side. So I shall put that image on now.
I was just sat on the wall at the back of the camera there minding me on business having a banana and I spotted this little hole here and my first thought was it looked worn at the bottom and I thought I wonder if that's a bat roost so I came in got the old specs on had a look underneath the hole see if I could see any droppings first of all and I can't see any bat droppings at all um, very very different to most droppings but uh, I'll leave that for another video but uh, what I did notice and I'll just get you a close up now so if you look just above the hole you'll see that the hole has been reduced in size by mud and I know it's mud and I know it's been done by a bird because if you look carefully you'll see little tiny holes and that's where a nut hatch has, has prodded the mud into place it's, it's created this bank of mud to reduce the hole in size so that it's just big enough for its own purpose what a great little find and so close to the ground as well I'm really not sure if it's in use it, it, the mud feels quite dry um, so I suspect not one from a previous year but that, that can be used quite easily now that the nuthatch has done that bit of work um, by other um, cavity nesting birds such as cold tits, blue tits, great tits and like I say even roosting bats can use that because it's completely protected from the wind and rain a lovely little dry spot just goes to show when you sit down and just take a bit of time out how you notice these things so I spent quite a bit of time mooching around this this one particular area and um, the sun is in and out and I really want it to be in for this shot um, there's a lot more cloud around at the moment than there is sunshine fortunately so hopefully I can get um, what I want in a few minutes but I was looking for um, a group of bluebells that had a complementary shape to them and, and typically nature doesn't always perform the way we want it so I have done a little bit of manufacturing in this instance so this cluster here we've got three flowering spikes and they progressively get taller from the left to the right and when I found them they were sort of bunched together and I couldn't find any elsewhere that, that weren't like that it, they all had the problems so I decided with time um, not being infinite to manufacture this just a little bit and just give the composition a little bit of a helping hand so what I've done is I've broke some little bits of sticks off um, some some dead fall over there and either side of the main flowering spike I've got um, two twigs a twig on either side just to create separation from the two at either side now equally I've got a longer stick at the back and I've pushed that forward just to bring them all into line and the reason I've done that is because I don't really want to shoot um, at something like f16 f22 because all the background will become too distracting i really want a soft uh, foreground and background so you can really focus on on the plants um, i could focus stack but there is a wind that comes uh, quite frequently and i can't guarantee that I can, that these spikes if they move between exposures that they'll rest back in the same place so i've really got to try and get this in one take and so i'm going for f4 and I've, I've just done this little bit of manufacturing just just to bring them in the right position they're not completely flat to the plane but they're pretty close and um, they should make for a really nice image um, what I haven't done on this occasion which I often do is I get the camera out first and check that I can get a shot and sometimes even take the shot but I thought it would be nice a real life situation because I do my ideal would be to get the camera really low into the grass and just shoot through this lovely creeping soft grass here this lush green and just have them peeping up from a sea of green but i, I, I don't think there's in i think in order to get the camera down so low i think the background trees and the sort of i suppose horizon line if you will will show us a dark line if i get too low so I'm probably going to have to lift the camera up a little bit higher whether that will work in practice um, I'll just have to see but I thought I'd, 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 I'd be honest and open about that before I even tried it because sometimes 
I'll, um, I'll check a scene out and it doesn't work and I'll move on but I thought it might be useful to see a real life situation and, and see the, the, the difficulties in overcoming the problems and, and how I do that so let's get the camera out now it's going to be a 160mm lens just to give me um, c compress the scene as much as possible that's my longest lens and uh, hopefully we'll get a nice image out of this so I'm going to use the tripod for this because there is nothing that the tripod legs can interfere with um, in terms of shaking the subject whilst trying to get the tripod into position so it's been nice to have a, a sturdy platform to work from let's get the camera got the lens on ready so i say my idea will be to shoot really low something like that so a 4.5 yeah I mean ideally I would have preferred to have been even lower than that I wanted to shoot through all this this stuff here but there really isn't enough of it at the moment where the camera is I'm getting that that background horizon line is a really dark mass and it's just not pleasant at all I think I want to go in a little bit closer and uh, yeah as I suspected I'm going to need to be bit higher to be able to exclude that background and shoot down ever so slightly that's better and just about clip off the top there camera's nice and sensor's nice and parallel to the subject just enough breathing space on top of the bluebells without showing that line so I'm going to zoom in at 100% and just focus in there's a little bit of wind that grass is beautifully green and lush so f4.5 100 ISO and I'll put that on now. again off to my left hand side there's a black cap black cap singing right on cue and there's a robin as well just singing over there I'm going to sit here for a while and just enjoy the sounds of the wood but um, for you guys I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave it there let me know as always in the comments below what you think of today's images I will put those on 
in just a second. If you've enjoyed the, today's video and you, you like what you've seen, you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and of course ring the bell for notifications. So the next time you see me, I may well be having a video from Switzerland, so stay tuned for that. So until next time, thank you all so much for joining me. Bye for now.